Hello, everybody. We are back. I am on page 19 of the packet. That's if you start going with the first page as page one and just count and hit page 19, you will find this page right here. Um, I know we're skipping a bunch. The rest of the problems in there are similar to the trick problems we've been doing. There are just more of them. Um, this packet was originally designed for you to do in class, obviously, and we would have used much more examples. Um, so we're just going to head to the next sort of topic in trig, which is finding a missing angle. So up until now, we've been using Sokotoa, which we're, we're getting pretty good at identifying this, it seemed, from your guys' assignments. Um, we're still going to be using Sokotoa. The difference is now, if you remember what I said in the very beginning of the trig unit, the very first day I said you have to let the X fall wherever it does and not try to make it look like the problem beforehand. So we have to keep that in mind today. And to do this, you're going to notice what happens. I'll talk about the directions in a minute. But just take a look at number one here. You'll notice, number one, I have a right triangle. I need a right triangle. If I don't have a right triangle, I can't do any of this. But also, you'll notice that the information that I've been given is different than the information so far. Because so far, we've always been given one side, we've been given an angle, and we are generally asked to find another side. We don't know what this sign could be the opposite, the adjacent, or the hypotenuse, but it's always been a side up until this point. Now, if you notice, the X is labeled on the inside of the triangle, which means the X is an angle. We are looking for an angle, and we are given a second clue besides the fact of where the X is. The other clue is that it tells us to find the nearest tenth of a degree. Sides are not measured in degrees. Angles are measured in degrees. So pay attention to these outside sort of factors and hints that are telling you what it is you're looking for. Now, that's sort of the bad part is that this is different. The good news is you set this up the same way. Exact same way as we've done before. Right angle, go across, H. Other angle, go across. Now notice the other angle this time is an X, not a number, but that's fine because remember what I said, X is more powerful than blank. So this is the other angle, go across, and you have your O, your third side has to be your A. What two sides do I have? Well, I have my A and I have an O. Think of Sokotoa. I have A and O. I'm going to need a tangent. So tan. Now in the parentheses, we always put the angle. Always the angle in parentheses. And that's going to equal O over A. So 16 over 10. Okay. Now we have that's a six. Um, oh, that's more great. Now we have a problem. Usually we just cross multiply here, but if we cross multiply, that parenthesis is always going to stay connected to the tan. That x right now is in jail. I call it in jail when it's in parentheses like that. How do you bust the x out of jail? We can't leave him in there. He's our buddy. We got to get him out. Here's what we do. We use sine inverse, cosine inverse, or tan inverse. And the little negative one means inverse. The way you do it on your calculator is you will press second, and then in this case, tan. Now you press whatever one you need. In this case, we're going to press second tan because we're using tan. If we were using cosine, we would press second cosine. If we were pressing sine, we would press second sine. But the second button, and then sine, cosine, or tangent. And what that will do is always rewrite it. Do not type in your calculator until you have rewritten it on your paper to say x equals tan inverse 16 over 10. And you're putting the numbers in the parentheses. And now I'm going to go to my handy dandy calculator. I'm going to press the second and tan 16 over 10. And I get nearest tenth of a degree. I get 57.99, which actually has to round to 58.0. Make sure you put the decimal at said nearest tenth. Okay. I'm going to do one more of these here. 
Um, I'm going to skip around a little bit. Let me head to number four just so I do something different. Let's see here. Am I H? Am I O? Am I A? Looks like I have O and H. Think of Sokotoa. That means sine. So sine angle is X. 12 over 24. Uh oh, my X is in jail. Get my X out of jail by using sine inverse. 12 over 24. I'm starting the calculator. Second sine 12 divided by 24. I get 30.0. Um, some of these do come out to be whole numbers. That's fine. It, the direction said nearest tenth, so please make sure you're putting the point zero. I know it's nitpicky, but that is what it is. Um, so here's what I'm going to have you guys do if you can. This page here, the rest of page 19, there's only uh, four more questions. And we'll hold off on the word problems for now. I, want, I just want to see this, so if you could get these done either today or tomorrow morning, then we can uh, try some harder problems with this with word problems. But let's see what you can do. Just stick on this page. This is page 19 in your packet, like I said, using trig to find the missing angle and try to finish this page, um, like I say, either today or tomorrow morning. Thank you, and uh, please don't hesitate to let me know somewhere, either email me or put in the comments if you are having problems uh, either with the questions or with your calculator. Let's see you in the next one, guys.